Hello everybody and welcome to my next game development video. So nothing has really changed in the last tutorial. Uh, well I am working on the design screen again because I have to modify that but uh, I told you in this tutorial that I was going to actually show you how my event system was working so uh, let me show you this. Okay, so this is the way my uh, well my whole map works. Okay, so I have it that when I put a start or end or something, that is um, something else I'm loading in. So right now I'm loading my map properties. So I'm loading in how many layers there are. Uh, yes, that's the end of the map properties. Sorry. So for my layer one properties, so for the first layer, uh, there's nothing for overlay, so I don't even need that in there. Uh, so I set which type of blocks are transparent, right? So uh, a zero zero index means it is transparent. Okay. Uh, I've loaded my I'm loading my tile map and the dimensions for each tile. So how wide each tile is on a layer. So this is my map that I'm loading in this layer from, and the dimensions for thirty two by thirty two. So after I'm done my properties. Oh, and I should zoom in you guys so this is it here okay so for my layer after I'm done my properties for my la my layer one so this is my layer two map so based on the map that I have which I'll show you my map uh, let's go down uh, so based on my map uh, if you go here uh, one zero represents the grass so one the first block whatever and zero and the y coordinate right uh so i'm drawing grass etc etc and drawing the rocks at the bottom right here on the first layer on the second layer i have nothing in the overlay so i can erase that so for my layer two properties i set that a zero zero represents a transparent block and i'm loading this layer from the same tile map the reason why I did it like that is because say you have um, multiple layers but you want to have different tile sheets for different things on different layers then you can load them accordingly so for this one we're using this tile map uh, the, with the dimensions and the tile the tile 2 is going to just contain the pathway uh, to the house and uh, tile map 3 is we set the overlay so uh, where the map is going to overlay the player so in this case the roof of the house so it looks like the player standing behind it so we have the overlay uh, properties right here from the tile map uh, which blocks are transparent uh, the map and the dimensions and we draw our house accordingly based on the tile map coordinates okay so the way my collision works is that the O's represents a pass through value and the X's represent something solid so this is representing the house right here uh, these are representing the rocks at the bottom so for my event properties uh, I have the event type so my event type is set to transfer okay so what it has is that my next one is the event property so I have it like this and I separate it by a straight line and this is what it signifies so this signifies the event name which is on the map okay uh, this is uh, because it's a transfer value uh, this displays which new map we're transferring to or if it's the same map this tells us what event we're landing on on the new map so on this new map we are going to be landing over here on this new map okay this represents the direction the player has to be facing to trigger the event so it could be up, down, left, or right, or any direction. And this represents the action the player has to do to, sign to activate the event. So whether they have to press a button or just touch it for the event. Okay, so in this case, you have to be facing the house and pressing a button. So the reason why I did the event properties like this and not separate it into different things like having uh, one for the, the event name, etc., etc., is because different events are going to take a different amount of parameters. So the way I'm going to do it is that say I have like a battle event or whatever, right? One's going to represent uh, the the name of it, the name of the event. So we'll say B1 for battle one. Uh, the next parameter will be the enemy. So it might be a ghost 
Uh, the next one might be uh, the level, the level range or something. I don't know, anything that it could be, right? So it takes in different parameters, right? Uh, rather than, so in, when I have my event properties, the way I load it in is that I know that if the event type is transfer, then it takes in five different properties. Then, I, then if I do another event type and the event type is battle, then I know the battle takes in say three properties, so I know to store three properties rather than check for five, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the way it works. And then when I go to my map three, uh, I say the event type is a transfer, it's M2, it transfers you to map 2, uh, and it transfers you to the coordinate M3 on map 2. Uh, direction you have to be facing is down, and the map, and the, uh, and the action is a touch action. So if I show you this for a second, uh, one thing is kind of messed up on my event system. Uh, which I will show you, but uh, I, it's a it's an easy fix. I just never had time to fix it. Uh, so let me zoom out. Uh, so uh, when you touch the house, nothing happens. When you press the enter button, uh, it transfers. Right now, nothing happens here because the direction you have to be facing to activate this touch event is down. So when I press the down key, it transfers out. So everything seems to go according to plan, but one thing that I messed up here is that when I leave it, right as soon as I touch it, it transfers out. One thing I like about it though is that it shows that like you are touching the door, like up there, and then it, it moves you down. So uh, it's kind of like it's it's kind of it's pretty cool how it does that. So I might incorporate that type of animation in it whenever you exit or enter a new room or something like that. I don't know. Uh, but it, it's up to me to design choice, but uh, that is how my event system. That's how my whole map system works uh, So you'll see more from uh, me uh, The probably the next video is going to be on the designing menu uh, I want to make the design screen fancy and stuff, but I've kind of strayed away from that I just want to get it done. So it was probably not going to be as fancy as it was before but it's going to be fully working and I'm gonna add in all the content, content, and then make it all fancy and look good later on. So, anyways, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you at least learned something or gained some insight. So, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this, and bye.